The next item is a public hearing item number 26. Application is for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, docket number 15-5156, block 1149, lot 39, 110 West 78th Street in the Upper West Side, Central Park West Historic District, a Queen Anne Renaissance Revival style row house designed by Alfred Zucker and Company and built in 1885 to 1886. This is an application to replace windows. Okay, pretty straightforward. Are there, <coughs> are there questions? Maybe we don't need. No. Well, we approved many of these. Right? We have approved the many of are. them. Yeah. Um, in in the the earlier approvals was a different manufacturer, and they were able to get a meeting rail. The meeting rail has to get a little bit bigger because of the weight of the glass. Um, but in the previous approvals, the top rail of the lower sash, which was bigger, was the larger piece, and the bottom rail of the top sash, which is the front piece, remained small. And so we approved a meeting rail that was a, at a, a total of two and three quarters inches. And the one that's currently being proposed for this one is at four and three sixteenths, so, or nine sixteenths. So um, this is a change from the earlier approvals in this fact that that one detail doesn't um, recall the historic detail as closely as it did in previous approvals. And because those were actually foreign windows, that, right? That's and correct. The local manufacturer. I believe this is an American uh, company? No, it's, uh, it's also a German. It's also a German. Oh, so just go to the same guys. So maybe we should open the hearing and yeah. have you uh, describe this. So, uh, yeah. I don't think you need to prolong the conversation. Okay. I mean, let's just talk about the meeting rail. Okay. Uh, the current meeting rail, as Sarah pointed out, is this size. Uh, the revised one, uh, which is increased for two reasons, not only the uh, change from single glaze to double glazing affects the size of it, but also the tilt and turn operation. Uh, the, what would normally have happened was that the, uh, the lower operable sash forward, uh, we wanted to get the lower sash built back so it was fully one and three quarter inch back from the base of the fixed sash to replicate the uh, traditional double hung scenario. But part of that configuration uh, means that the overall arrangement is, as Sarah pointed out, slightly bigger. Uh, what we did do was make this rail only marginally bigger than the uh, top sash rail here. It goes from about one and seven eighths up to two and uh, three quarters. Uh, and the, the additional increase at, at the meeting rail is set up on a different plane at the lower sack. So at least when you look at it uh, directly, the lower end of the top sack is not that dissimilar from 
is there, given the increased uh -huh. Well, wh why is it so important to have the tilt and turn operation as opposed to? Uh, it's uh, mainly to do with uh, significantly improved uh, energy and, uh, savings and uh, sound reduction. The tilt and turn window has a sort of compressible seat on the blocks down. Mm -hmm. There's additional security as well. That wasn't a factor here, but uh, they also be the increased. Okay. All right. Are there other questions uh, from but the commission? Here But you're, you're familiar with the other manufacturer's section, right? Uh, there's many manufacturers doing it. I'm not sure who will No, the, the ones that have been approved already by the commission because they really do replicate the double hung detail? Uh, no, we weren't made aware oh, okay. that there was a, a standard approval. Well, not standard, it's exactly. Not, it's not really a standard. Right. Yes, yeah, we do. So yeah. they could work with you because yeah, you've yeah. got a lot of information. Yeah. Why, why don't we go to testimony unless there's uh, other... One last thing. Overall, Michael. we did work with the light and air requirements, and notwithstanding the bigger sash, uh, the, the, the best case scenario windows are within 1.8% of the uh, original light, and the worst case scenario is within 4.9% of the original light area. And, and I believe your, the way you do the calculations... It's We work with appearance. It's mostly. But I think there is a number, yeah. five percent or something. Okay, let's go to um, um, Max Yestum, Landmark West. Of course. Didn't say it was Landmark West. Max Yestum, representing Landmark West. The C of A committee does not support this application for window replacement, which makes no attempt to restore the building's original window fenestration. In 2009, Landmark West celebrated the unsung heroes of the Upper West Side, honoring 110 West 78th Street with a facade restoration award, copies of which I have handed out. The award was presented by George Wheeler, Director of Conservation at Columbia University Graduate School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation. The award was well earned, as the owners of the row house had restored it to its original glory. When they brought the, row, bought the row house 30 years ago, its facade and stoop were covered by nearly a dozen coats of paint. In 2007, rather than merely repaint and gloss over underlying deterioration issues, the owners decided to strip the facade to its original brick and brownstone. After determining and completing a sensitive paint removal process, the restoration contractor revealed crisp pressed Philadelphia red brick and rich brownstone, for the most part, beautifully intact and eminently restorable. A comprehensive facade restoration project ensued, involving paint removal, masonry cleaning, full cutting and pointing, stone repair, sheet metal corners repair, and extensive work on the massive L-shaped stoop and areaway. The contractor's artisans were also able to salvage all of the ornamental brownstone panels on the facade, with only minor repairs and recreate the exact shade of orange mortar to match the original. When the committee learned that the owner is applying to LPC to replace all the original double hung wood windows with tilt and turn metal windows, we were shocked. They're not metal windows. The owner's proposed window replacement does not value the windows as an important component of this Queen Anne Renaissance revival style row house design and it is a missed opportunity to do the right thing. The applicant's architect claims the tilt and turn replacement windows are a higher performing and more secure, though window experts on our C of A committee point out that these windows are not practical and more importantly, totally inappropriate. We are told the proposed windows will be manufactured abroad. The architect reported at our certificate of appropriateness, uh, appropriateness meeting that the windows are in various states of degradation and therefore re we recommend that the windows are individually evaluated with keeping restoration in mind, given that most of the building's windows are original, we recommend that the applicant reevaluate plans for replacement. If tilt and turn windows had been including, included during the restoration, we would not have honored the building with an Unsung Heroes Award in 2009. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, the Community Board 7. Uh,
voted six to one uh, in favor of the following uh, resolution, which concluded with this paragraph, the Preservation Committee, I guess this is just the Preservation Committee of Community Board 7, Manhattan believes that while the operation of the lower sash will appear notably different from that of the double hung window when open, when closed, the windows closely resemble double hung units. Further, the inward tilting units yield uh, improved thermal and sound characteristics. Therefore, because all the front windows will be replaced so that there will be uh, a uniformity of operation uh, in the new fenestration, the Preservation Committee believes that the revised replacement window design is reasonably appropriate to the historic character of the building and of the historic district. Therefore, be it resolved that Community Board approves the replacement. So there we go, a split vote. <laughs> um, any, um, anything to respond to? Well, uh, only that, uh, just to uh, formally correct, that the, uh, the windows are wood. Are wood, metal, I think we heard that, yeah. And okay. that uh, as to the condition of the wood, as to the windows, the owners have been in the building, uh, their owner occupants, they've been in it for over 30 years and uh, have lived with the windows which were in poor condition then. It's, a, it's really a matter of necessity that they're approaching it now. They're, they're not taking the restoration lightly or changing it just for uh, yeah. the sake of it. I think they do see themselves as stewards of the building as worn out by the uh, landmark of West Moore. Right. Which is, uh, West okay, thank you. Uh, Joan? Michael Devonshire. Well, if it has in fact been established by staff that the uh, that the original historic windows uh, require replacement, then I would say that they need to be uh, windows that match as closely as possible the originals. I would like to add that uh, we just finished a restoration project in Park Slope in which we got new double hung windows that had the same compressible weather stripping that has the same sound suppression qualities that uh, these purport to. So that's another possibility. Uh, Libby, Ryan. Um, I, I'm slightly confused about uh, what the issues are here, but um, I think that if there is a way to improve the large meeting rail um, situation, that that would be all I needed to approve it, and I would be willing to leave that in the staff's hands. Okay, uh, Marjorie. Yeah, I mean, I want to just point out that, um, and I didn't, I don't think I heard that in the presentation that when we have seen these kind of this kind of alternate window type, it's been in, in connection with a passive house where they actually have to get 100% non-infiltration in the house. And so we've made that kind of concession to the operation in the interest of allowing for passive houses to be renovated in historic districts. I'm, all, I'm not getting the impression that that's what this is for. Um, and so if in fact there are the proper operations that now provide really good energy conservation, I would think that we should stick with the consistent operation and not just the look, but otherwise um, to work with staff in both cases on this. Okay, Chris Moore. Work with staff, work with staff. okay. Michael. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I was, gonna, I, was I, I echo uh, what Marjorie just said. I mean, we've only done this in the context of passive houses and we have in the past considered operation as part of the qualities of of the historic nature of the house design. On the other hand, I do want to point out, this is improving the condition somewhat by taking off the outer storms, having the screens located within the lower sash, all of which will expose the frame to, uh, to view. So I think that if, if it can be worked out, it should be, uh, but I think we should uh, try to keep the operation to be the same. 
Um, my own thought is that working with staff, they uh, either make the meeting rail smaller or revert back to a, a double hung or single hung operation. But uh, for me, they can work with staff. So I don't know, where are we with? Um, yeah, we all agreed about the work. Go. <laughs> it's your so I think, um, <laughs> Yeah, we can. We can do a resolution. Just sort of a resolution that kind of captures everything that was discussed. I think that the goal would be to work with the staff to determine the condition of the existing windows and whether or not they warrant replacement. And, um, and then to look at other options for double hung windows that are high performing and have a similar um, inf air infiltration measure, and if that's not possible, then allow the change in operation as long as the meeting rail can be thinner and more closely recall the historic details. Yeah, only the tricky part of that is slippery slope before we were in passive houses. Now, yeah, we that's exactly potentially right. Precedent. open up everything, every double hung window. Yeah. We have, um, while they've been mostly passive houses or um, something that is achieving. Close, close to a passive house. We have also, in a few instances, done it where they um, were not doing a, a high a passive house or close to passive house. That's why they're going to work with staff. Okay. Michael, do you want to try to put that into a resolution? Uh, that if you could have just paraphrased what. Uh, no problem. Sarah we'll just be here all day. 110 <laughs> West 78th Street, Upper West Side, Central Park West Historic District. The applications to replace windows. I recommend approval with modifications, finding that the proposed windows uh, that well that the applicant will 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 first and foremost work with staff to determine that the uh, existing windows are in uh, uh, such a poor condition that they mandate uh, or reasonably mandate a replacement. If that is the case then the proposed windows will match the historic configuration materials and finish uh, of the historic one over one double hung wood windows. That the d details and dimensions of the window head jam and sills will closely match those details on the historic windows. Um, that the operation will be uh, maintained as a double hung window uh, if the staff and the applicant can determine that the, that the energy performance meets uh, the required criteria. Uh, and that the change in operation at the low, at the, uh, that the meeting rail will, will be, uh, will match the dimensions of the, or, or better approach the dimensions of the existing. And that if, uh, and that's it. That's about it, right. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> the opposition? Okay. It passes unanimously. Work with staff. Thank you.